friends. I hope you've all had a great week. Um, today is Good Friday. Uh, it's a day commemorating the crucifixion of Jesus. And Sunday is Easter, which is an amazing day to celebrate Jesus rising again and ascending into heaven um, to be with God. So today we're going to read the Easter story. It was a very exciting day in Jerusalem. Riding on a humble donkey, Jesus had arrived in the city for the festival of Passover. Cheers rang out from the crowd and palm leaves waved in the air. Everyone had come to see their king entering the city. God bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord, they shouted. Many people laid palm leaves down for the donkey to walk upon. Everyone wanted to show their love and respect. Six days before the festival of Passover, Jesus and his disciples went to stay with some friends. They were served a special meal, and while they relaxed around the table, a woman opened a jar of expensive perfumed oil. She kneeled down and rubbed the oil onto Jesus' head. You could have sold that and given that money to the poor, snapped Judas, one of Jesus' disciples. Leave her alone, said Jesus. She is being kind. Judas felt angry with Jesus, and his anger allowed evil to creep into his heart. He knew that the chief priest didn't like Jesus, and he decided to help them get rid of him. Two days before Passover, he met with them and agreed to lead them to Jesus when Jesus was alone. I will kiss Jesus to show the guards who to arrest, he told the priests. In return, the priest promised to pay Judas 30 pieces of silver. Jesus knew that the priests were plotting against him. He also knew that it was all part of God's plan and that he would leave the world soon to join his Father in heaven. But he still felt sad when he thought about what was going to happen. The evening before Passover, Jesus took some water and kneeled in front of each of the twelve disciples in turn. He gently washed their feet and dried them on a towel. Lord, you should not wash our feet, said the disciples. You are too important. No one is more important, to the, more important than anyone else, said Jesus. Even though I am your teacher, we are all equal because we are all God's children. On the day of Passover, Jesus and his disciples sat down to eat a special meal together. Soon, one of you will betray me, Jesus told them. The disciples were shocked, all except Judas. Who is it, they asked. They didn't notice Judas turning pale. But Jesus would not speak Judas' name. He blessed the bread by saying a prayer, then broke it into pieces and handed it to his disciples. Like this bread, my body will be broken, he said. Please, eat it. He blessed the wine and passed around the cup so they could all drink from it to show they were part of God's family. This wine is like my blood, which will be spilled for many people, he said. Please drink it. As I ate and drank, Jesus watched his disciples with sadness in his heart. Eat and drink to remember me, he said. We won't have another meal together until we are in God's kingdom. There was a quiet garden where Jesus liked to pray. After the meal, he took Peter, James, and John there to pray with him. While they rested, Jesus fell to his knees. He knew that the priests were coming for him, and he felt afraid. He prayed, Father, I know what needs to happen, but it's going to be very hard, he said. Please help me. Jesus spoke to God for a long time, and his disciples fell asleep. Soon Judas entered the garden. Judas was followed by men armed with swords and fiery torches. Rise, Jesus called, here comes the traitor. Peter, James, and John rose quickly, but it was too late. Judas walked up to Jesus and kissed his cheek. It was his signal to the guards that this was the man to arrest. The guards grabbed Jesus by the arms and held him tightly. Peter wanted to fight, but Jesus stopped him. My Father in heaven will protect me, he said. The chief priests took Jesus to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. The Romans were in charge of Jerusalem, so it was Pilate's job to decide what would happen to prisoners. 
Pilate questioned Jesus, trying to find out if Jesus was an enemy of Rome. He knew that the chief priests wanted Jesus dead, but he believed Jesus was harmless. Early the next morning, a large crowd had gathered. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. The chief priests had already talked to the crowd and told them lies about Jesus. No, the people shouted, crucify him. Why, Pilate asked, what crime has he committed? But the crowd just kept shouting, crucify him. Pilate was a weak man, and he wanted to please the people, so he had Jesus beaten and then handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers dressed Jesus in purple robe to make fun of him. Purple was the color of the king's war, and they thought he had been pretending to be a king. They wanted to mock him and laugh at him. They even twisted together some thorns to make a crown. Hail, king of the Jews, they shouted, laughing at him. Jesus was forced to carry a heavy, heavy wooden cross through the crowded streets. All the way, people jeered and shouted to, at him. It was very different from the way he had arrived in Jerusalem. At nine o'clock in the morning, the soldiers nailed Jesus to the cross. Father, forgive them, Jesus whispered. They don't understand what they are doing. The minutes crept by like hours, and Jesus was in great pain. A crowd gathered, shouting nasty things at Jesus and making fun of him. If you were really the Son of God, you would save yourself, they jeered. Come down from the cross. Jesus did not reply. The sun shrank away, and the sky became dark and stormy. But the crowd and the priests kept shouting their cruel words. Finally, at three o'clock, with a loud cry, the Son of God took his last breath. Later that day, a Roman named Joseph took down Jesus' body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in a tomb. Then he rolled a large, heavy stone over the entrance. Early the next morning, Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' friends, came to visit the tomb. To her amazement, she found that the large stone had been rolled away. All that was left there were the strips of linen in which Jesus had been wrapped. He is not here, said a voice. Mary turned and saw a man dressed all in white. He was an angel, but she did not know that. She gasped in fear. Do not be afraid, the man said. Jesus has risen. Go and tell his disciples. Trembling with shock and overcome with happiness, Mary fled from the tomb to find Peter and John. At first, Peter and John did not believe Mary's story. They followed her to the tomb and ran inside. Someone has stolen the body, they cried. Who could have done such a thing? They went to tell the other disciples what had happened, but Mary stayed behind. What shall I do, she cried, tears running down her face. She was afraid to be there all alone, but she did not want to go home either. Mary, said a familiar voice. She knew Jesus' voice at once. But how could it be him? A man stepped forward. Master, cried Mary, falling to her knees before him. Tell the disciples what you have seen, said Jesus. I will soon be with my Father in heaven. Mary ran back to find the disciples. I have seen my Lord with my own eyes, she cried. He has risen from the grave. Over the next 40 days, Jesus appeared many times to his disciples. On the Mount of Olives near Jerusalem, he spoke to them one last time. It is time for me to return to my Father in heaven, he said. Everything has happened just as he said it would, but I will always be with you. The sun burst out from behind a bank of clouds. A golden beam of light dazzled them. The disciples watched Jesus rise up to heaven. Then two angels appeared, dressed in shimmering white. Jesus will come back to you, they promised. The disciples shared smiles of love and happiness. They knew that, until Jesus returned, they would keep his words alive, and they would spread his message throughout the world.